<sighs> Hello friends, today I'm coming to you from my sofa with Upper to say two words that I know is going to spark a lot of people's nostalgia for the 2014 era of Tumblr, of emo, of fandom, which is Hayley Williams. And if you couldn't tell based on everything that's going on here and how I'm dressed and the fact that my hair is dyed, I used to be a massive emo kid and still am one at heart. And I was obsessed with Paramore. And in a Rolling Stone article in 2020, Hayley Williams cited that a book that she had loved reading was a book called Women Who Run With The Wolves. And with the new Paramore album coming out, I was like, you know what? Let's heal. Let's heal my inner emo child and read this book so I can pretend like I have a parasocial relationship with Hayley Williams. Parasocial? And I'm going into this reading vlog completely blind. I don't know anything about this book. I just bought it on my Kindle and I was like, let's go. But you could say that hopefully I'll come out the other end with uh, brand new eyes. Yeah, the puns have started and they're not gonna stop. So get ready for that. So let's chat first impressions of this book. And if I'm being completely honest, I am slightly weirded out by it. So what the author is arguing is a few things. The first and the main one is that they are arguing that women have lost touch with their natural selves. And that natural self is dubbed as the wild woman. And they argue that you see this wild woman across different cultures and is kind of a more extreme version of mother nature. And to quote the book to help give a little bit more context to what the word wild means here, the writer says, the word here is not used in its most pejorative sense, meaning out of control, but in its original sense, which means to live a natural life, one in which the creature has innate integrity and healthy boundaries. And she says the reason why it's important to come back to this is that without her, the wild woman, Women forget why they're here. They hold on when they would best hold out. They take on too much or too little or nothing at all. Without her, they are silent when they are in fact on fire. She is their regulator. She is their soulful heart, the same as the human heart that regulates the physical body. And you know what? At a base level, I am all for this. I'm not sure how gender inclusive this book is. And from what I can see so far, there hasn't been any mention of defining women solely based on sex but i think that might be the implication so i feel like that's something that's kind of not sat right with me at the moment and i can definitely see how this would be a really great book to read in quarantine because there's a lot of descriptions of nature that are quite personal and intense and quite moving and vivid as well but that being said the language that this book has used is It feels a little bit like airy and like new age spirituality -y. And I want to read you a couple of quotes that made me be like, huh? When I was reading this yesterday. So for context for the first one, she also argues as part of this that the archetype of the wild woman also is reflected in the study of wolves. You might see where I'm going with this. And she makes this comparison by saying, healthy wolves and healthy women share certain psychic characteristics, keen sensing, playful spirit, and a heightened capacity for devotion. Wolves and women are relation by nature, inquiring, possessed of great endurance and strength. They are deeply intuitive, intensely concerned with their young, their mates, and their pack. Um, <laughs> take that as you will. And then she goes on to talk about her own upbringing where she says she was brought up in Michigan and she was surrounded by nature and says two things that made me be like, what? <laughs> when I was reading this, so she says, there in Michigan, thunder and lightning were my main nutrition. And then she's also talking about how being in nature helped her get in touch with her wild woman self and says that climbing to the tops of trees taught me what sex would someday feel like now if you see my last video you might know i am all here for spirituality i'm not trying to like shame anyone if you find that that resonates with you pop off more power to you but for me personally this might be a bit too much. I am slightly starting to worry that I'm not gonna get through the book in time as well because it's really densely packed too. 
it's like 500 pages and the first chapter has already made me be like oh i don't know if i can read any more of this but you know what we're here for Hayley williams and i am not going to let Hayley down so i am going to try my hardest to finish reading this okay so i want you guys to answer this question honestly is there something wrong with me because I do not understand this book. I feel like every time I start to understand what the author is saying, and I'll be like, mm, you know what, that's actually a good point. Somehow she starts here and then ends up all the way over there. And I'm like, how did you get there? So what the author does throughout the book is that she'll use popular stories or fairy tales to kind of illustrate her points. And in the second chapter of the book, which is called Stalking the Intruder, she uses the story of Bluebeard to talk about how it represents an innate and dark part of women's psyche that isn't allowed to surface at the conscious level. And she argues that at this subconscious level, women have what's called an innate predator inside them. But then literally two pages later, she says something completely different about Bluebeard and says that we should try and look at the Bluebeard character, like the actual man in the story, as a continuous exile from redemption and use it as a lens to understand loneliness. What? <laughs> she then goes on to argue that women have been trained their whole lives to be prey, which I guess goes back to the idea of having an innate predator and I definitely agree with, particularly if you look at men as a predator in that way. And she says a quote which makes sense, where she says, this early training to be nice causes women to override their intuitions, which I completely agree with. So I was like, okay, maybe she is leading us down this feminine angle, as she has done for literally the whole book and the whole introduction, saying that women need to lean into their like feminine energy and feminine powers. But then she goes back to the Bluebeard story and talks about the moment in the original fairy tale where the younger sister calls upon her brothers to help her take down Bluebeard and then says that that is the point where the younger sister is the strongest when she has called upon men to help her and then says that in this case the now wider woman draws an internal masculine energy to her aid. I don't know if I'm interpreting this wrong and this is meant to be more of like a yin yang analogy where like there's masculine energy and feminine energy and you can't have it without the other but even just reading those few lines gave the implication that this character who is a woman has to draw upon masculine energy to be strong kind of pissed me off and made me so confused because I thought the whole point of this book is to teach us how to be a wild woman. Yeah, and I don't know, my reading experience of this so far really just reminds me of trying to read like the critical theory at uni where I was like, you're using unnecessarily complicated language to illustrate your point. What are you actually saying? <laughs> So I was like, why do people like this book? I don't understand. So I tried to skip ahead to the front of the book to read the review quotes that authors will often give to publishers. And Maya Angelou was at the front and she said, everyone who can read should read this book. So in summary, I've just let Maya Angelou and Hayley Williams down simultaneously by not understanding this book. So for future reference, if anyone asks me why I have self-esteem issues, this book is the reason. This is why. I told you there'd be puns. I'm gonna read the final chapter of this book and somehow force my way through it and then I will report back and give you my final thoughts. Hi, we're Paramore and um, this is, this is why. Positives. The book ended with a poem that had a refrain that I actually quite liked and it was again retelling a story which was the story of Little Red Riding Hood and it was flipping the script on its head and said if you don't go out into the woods nothing will ever happen and your life will never begin which I assume is sort of like the author saying to women in particular that if you don't take that risk and take that jump in your life then nothing will ever happen. So I did quite like that full circle moment However, the rest of it was awful. And I feel like I had to remind myself that actually this book was originally published in the 1970s. And now that I work in publishing and I have seen some of the stuff that was published in the 70s, 
it makes a lot more sense. And I actually found this one star review on Goodreads because I was like, surely I'm not the only person who feels this way. And it was from someone who worked at Ballantine Books, who I assume is the publisher who first published this book in the 1990s and was actually saying that the author, Clarissa, was actually really big headed. And they said they couldn't understand why it was a runaway bestseller at the time. And they called it overblown, overwritten, self-important, pseudo-intellectual and asked what the hell was to like. And honestly, I don't think I could have put it better myself. It really does have a pseudo-intellectual vibe and it was not for me. But it was slightly annoying as well because at the end of the book the author puts a little author's note saying that this might not be for some people and not everyone will understand this and that's fine. And I was like... Side eye. I understand that not every piece of non-fiction needs to have like 10 steps to get to X result. Like I, I write poetry, I know that you can gain something from something like a piece of art that is still abstract. That's not my point. I just felt like I gained absolutely nothing from this book. I'd really like to know as well what Hayley Williams gained from reading this book. Because in her interview with the Rolling Stone, she said, I learn more from this book each time I read it. Lately, I'm reading a lot about the concept of injured instinct and righteous rage, which I suppose probably were the two biggest takeaways from this book, basically telling women that your instincts have been stomped on by society in order to make you nice and mould people to their will. But realistically, I don't think you need to find that out through this book. And yeah, if Hayley Williams does ever end up watching this by some miracle, I can give you better book recommendations. So if you like this video, I think you might like a more positive reading vlog that I did over here. And as always, I hope you're having a lovely day and I will see you over there in the next video. Bye.